So the end of World War II really came at the time that it did, thanks to uh, two things, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. On August 6, 1945, we dropped the Little Boy atomic bomb on Hiroshima, which killed about 140,000 people immediately. And then three days later, on August 9, 1945, we dropped the Fat Man atomic bomb in Nagasaki, killing about 80,000 people. Many more, of course, um, were se severely sickened by radiation-related illnesses and died subsequently. And the picture that you see here is the, the firebomb or the, uh, the, the dropping of these um, atomic bombs. On August 15th, the Japanese officially surrendered. With that surrender, General MacArthur called for the demilitarization. Um, in other words, the purging uh, of professional military officers, wartime politicians, Zaibatsu leaders, because again, a lot of this was feeding the Zaibatsu. And he also called for democratization with a new constitution uh, that promised no more war-type forces, so um, no more uh, offensive forces, only defensive forces. The emperor remained, but uh, became really just symbolic. This was a period of major democratization, but it was also an attempt to, to try to make the, maintain this docile Japan in the same way that we tried to maintain a docile um, Western Germany at that point, and Eastern Germany was under the Soviets, um, so they were uh, docile just <laughs> because of that. Um, you had lots of economic problems, um, war reparations, for example, and lots of new freedoms, constitutionally mandated, which meant that the Communist Party became very popular in Japan in the early post-war period. Now, as the Cold War came underway, um, the U.S. really changed its policy on Japan and allowed it to become significantly less liberal with respect, for example, to labor. They cracked down on strikes. They allowed the formation of a core elite. And this core elite was made up of what they call the Iron Triangle. Experienced bureaucrats, conservative politicians led by the Liberal Democratic Party, the LDP, and then big business, the former Zaibatsu. Um, what with new leaders, right? Um, the Constitution was really U.S.-made. It was very liberal with respect to freedoms, at least on paper. It elevated the role of the local government over what it once was. And so now we'll talk a little bit about the institutions. Um, and uh, this is an interesting video worth watching. It shows sort of the, the, men the, the quote unquote red menace um, and how the U.S. really backed away from uh, a strong democratic um, system in Japan because of the fear of, of communism. And remember, this was the period of, of McCarthyism, early 1950s, um, and, and this really fits the, the template. So we'll start with the judiciary. Um, the Supreme Court in Japan is, is also their court of last instance, um, and it is the uh, constitutional court. Um, it hasn't traditionally been very independent. It was subservient to the LDP, the Liberal Democratic Party. Again, um, LDP, 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 that's the Liberal Democratic Party, which ruled Japan until just a few years ago, and actually came back in to power again in 2012. Um, so uh, cabinet officials actually appoint uh, members to the Supreme Court, um, they, which makes it easier to manipulate. Justices are nominated by the cabinet, as I mentioned. Uh, they're appointed by the emperor, um, this is symbolic, and then they're subject to the approval of voters after one year. And then every 10 years of service, they have to get voter approval. So it's a very interesting um, mechanism of, of, uh, of control. The Supreme Court there has the power of concrete judicial review, but they very rarely used it against the government. Um, the Supreme Court only exercises judicial review in cases where there is a genuine dispute between parties, so it doesn't accept questions of constitutionality from government officials. It's been very reluctant to become involved in politically sensitive issues as well. It tends to defer to government officials, and the result is an extremely conservative court, which has only struck down a handful of statutes on constitutional grounds, giving the LDP lots of power um, over, the, over the decades that it ruled. The emperor is the head of state in Japan. Um, this is symbolic. Um, what this is, is it's, it's about unity, or unity and continuity, really. Um, the emperor is, is hereditary, um, but again, the emperor doesn't really have power. Um, and in fact, formally, I don't even think the emperor is the head of state, but in, in practice, the emperor is seen in, in Japan as the head of state. The prime minister is the head of government. The prime minister comes from the Diet, which is their uh, parliament, and is almost always the head of the ruling party, which has almost always been the LDP. 
Uh, the Prime Minister is the most prestigious. Everyone wants to be the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister can dissolve the lower house of Parliament and call for early elections. Um, and the Prime Minister, of course, is responsible um, for running the state. To be Prime Minister, you need to wait and work your way up to the top. Not through promoting ideology or policy, but really by making friends and bargaining with other factions in the party. Um, and this is really important because it, if you think about the British case, it was all about party loyalty. Here, it's not about party loyalty at all. Um, instead, it's about um, it's about it's about cliques and it's about uh, making connections between these cliques, alliances. In terms of a couple other parties, uh, sorry, powers that the prime minister has, um, the the cabinet, uh, the prime minister and his cabinet uh, introduce legislation. Um, but interestingly, this is actually prepared largely in the bureaucracy. Um, and going back to a strong tradition of, of this meritocratic bureaucracy in Japan, um, the, the bureaucracy remains as meritocracy and is highly respected. Um, but what this means is that to actually influence a bill, you need to go there, not to ministers or even the legislature, because this is where the bills are actually prepared. In terms of the legislature, so the, the last prime minister, um, as of 2012, was uh, Yoshihiko Noda from the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party had its rise and then its fall, um, and then Abe came back um, in 2013, um, Abe being the head of the LDP. So, LDP, welcome back. Um, so, in terms of the legislature, this is uh, a, a pretty interesting system. You've got a House of Representatives, um, not surprisingly, just like ours, we wrote the Constitution, um, which serves four-year terms, uh, but the Prime Minister can dissolve it early. Um, they've got the power of a vote of no confidence, but it's very rare that they've actually used it. Um, what's interesting here is that they come to power through a mixed electoral system. 300 seats in the House of Representatives are elected through a plurality SMD system, and then 180 come from a PR system uh, from 11 regional blocks. Um, this actually followed from a 1994 reform uh, that was designed to reduce factionalization and give more weight to urban voters. Um, what this means is that some seats um, for, uh, you end up with some seats for, uh, for example, smaller parties like the Democratic Socialist Party, the Clean Government Party, which actually merged into the new Komei Ito Party in, in 1998, the Japanese Communist Party, and, and other smaller ones. Um, so the fact that the the fact that they have got this plurality SMD system and the PR system is really important. Um, you've got, the House of Councillors is the upper house of Parliament. Uh, it can't be dissolved, unlike the lower house, but it really has much less power, again, typical of upper houses of Parliament. Um, it's got no say with respect to the budget, with respect to treaties, or the designation of the Prime Minister. Uh, with respect to other decisions, the House of Representatives can actually override a vote of the House of Councillors by a two-thirds vote so they can be overridden. Um, these guys serve six-year terms. Um, and this is another really interesting point um, in terms of how they come to power. 98 are chosen from party lists from a PR system. And then 149 come from multi-member districts in the 47 uh, prefectures um, through a single non-transferable vote, um, which basically means the first several past the post win. So MMDs... Uh, what's what's important here is this isn't a typical PR system. These are MMDs, so you've got um, multi-member districts, but it's the candidate and not the party votes. So each voter really casts one vote for a candidate, and then uh, in a multi-candidate race for multiple offices, and then posts are filled by the candidates with the most votes. So in a three-seat constituency, the three candidates receiving the largest numbers of votes would win office. Um, because of these multi-member districts, and because they're not party-based, frequently members of one party will compete against each other, which results in these factions, which creates these own little party, which create these own little party machines in order to win the elections. And so, not surprisingly, you've got some of the most expensive campaigns in the world. Um, so again, this is this is really important having these multi-member districts without a party, um, without a party vote, meaning that you have intra-party. Um, discord, essentially, and the factionalization of these parties. Uh, so, uh, it's important to note, again, that Japan uses several types of electoral systems depending on the house. Um, 
Now, in terms of the parties, the LDP, as I mentioned, dominated for all but one year since 1955 until fairly recently. Um, it was a highly factional party. It is a highly factional party. There's no ideological glue that holds it together. It's generally a center-right party. It's, it's generally conservative, but it's not particularly ideological. Um, it has focused on certain core policies, including rapid export-based economic growth, which is what drove Jap Japan for so long in, in such a positive direction. Um, as any of you who are old enough to have owned a Walkman might know. Uh, privatization. Uh, and then in terms of, of foreign relations, working with the U.S. as a defense strategy has been key. Uh, the Democratic Party of Japan was founded in 1998 by the merger of several opposition parties. It was a, quote, revolutionary party, which wanted to, quote, overthrow the ancient regime, locked in old thinking and vested interests, solve the problems at hand, and create a new, flexible, affluent society which values people's individuality and vitality. Well, good luck. All right. Um, we'll talk about some problems with this in a second. But they, they supported a mixed economic system. They neither, neither favored uh, free market or the welfare state. Um, something, something in between. Um, they've been, they were governing Japan for the past couple of years. Uh, the first, uh, prime minister Hatoyama, uh, resigned in May of 2010 after breaking promises about getting the U S out, uh, as well as some financial scandals. So there's been continued resentment about the U S bases in Japan, especially Okinawa. Um, and then the prime minister, uh, Noda took power. Um, just to give you an idea of uh, the 2012, at least, allotment of seats. Um, in 2012, there were 118 seats for the LDP and 251 seats, and of course, I'm talking about the lower house, um, for, um, for the, for the de uh, Democratic Party of Japan. Um, so the Democratic, this was like the, this was the first time around 2010 when they came to power, um, I think it was 2010, that the LDP lost. And this was a, a big shift um, the problem is that they had a really tough time getting any of the reforms across, and that's why you had these unstable um, periods with these two prime ministers. And then ultimately they were voted out in 2013. Um, so in terms of some other parties, you've got People's Life First, and this, this is really a, a sign of this. Um, and I don't have People's Life, Life First written down here, but it'd probably be a subheading for the Democratic Party, um, because it was a splinter. Um, when Prime Minister Noda from the Democratic Party, again, he was Prime Minister from 2010 to 2011 or 12, um, raised a consumption tax from 5% to 10%, he had rebels from within his party. Again, not a big surprise given the factionalization of Japanese politics. Um, and they created this People's Life First, uh, which in 2012 had 37 seats. It was the third largest party in Parliament. Um, and then you've got the new Komeito Party. Um, which was established in 1998. It was a merger of a couple other opposition parties um, and became the fourth largest party. It's, it's sort of like the Tea Party in the United States. And so you could think of New Komaito Party somewhere down here. Sorry. Um, it, their, their, their desires are, their demands are to reduce the central government and the bureaucracy, increase the transparency in public affairs, increase local autonomy, um, with the private sector playing an increasing role. And so in 2012, they had 21 seats in the lower house. Now in terms of um, the smaller parties, J the Japan Socialist Party um, historically was the loyal, loyal opposition. They were renamed the Social Democratic Party in 1996. Um, but that's these guys right here, so Social Democratic Party. Um, by self-definition, they are a class-based party, and they only got six seats in, the 2000, in 2012. And then the Renaissance Party... Um, also known as the Jap Japan Renewal Party, was created by members of, of, powerful, of a powerful LDP faction in 1993 in the wake of a corruption scandal, actually a series of corruption scandals, and they created a coalition government that forced the electoral reforms in 1994, um, and, and then they merged with the New Frontier Party. So the, the real ones that you need to be familiar with are the, the Liberal Democratic Party and the Democratic Party of Japan. These are the two largest um, and then just be familiar with the dynamics that you've got um, the, the Renaissance Party, the Japan Renewal Party, which broke away from um, the LDP in the face of corruption or, or scandal. Um, then you've got the People's Life First Party, which broke away from the Democratic Party of Japan. 
the picture that you should have here is a factionalized party system where it's not surprising to find breakaways and where even in the in in a dearth of breakaways um in that sort of situation you still expect to find the parties um not at all cohesive oh we're going to stop there <laughs>